You know, I can reach out and touch this guy. Hey, buddy. Welcome on back to the channel, everybody. We're on the crusade today. If you guys watched the last video, you know that I, uh, I was using one of my original fishing poles. I actually got it with me right here. And I stumbled upon a lot of bluegill up shallow. And I was like, man, I really wanna just grab a cooler and fill it up with gills. Do a little catch and cook. And there's a creek up here on this lake I've, I've never gone up and fished. And it is hairy. So I got the crispy collector out and I'm just idling through some stumpy areas right now. This is a place that I would not take my bass boat. I've already hit a couple of stumps. Another hot Texas day. Good day to be in the creek. You know it's the middle of summer when you're just here and cicadas and all sorts of bugs up in these trees that just sing all day in the heat just like it's hot go inside crank the AC but you gotta fight you gotta resist so we got our cork we got our little uh soft frostbite ice jig actually and then I've got a crappie nibble on there this is gonna be more of a just a little a morsel out there for him Get our paddle in action here. I mean, how is there not just Gill City up under here? Well, fishing freaks, I have tried and I have tried and I've tried to run up miles up in this river. I'm sitting here under a big tree right now. And I've tied on another rig, a little clear cork fly rig on a spinning rod. Nothing. Only thing I see up here is gar and shad. There might even be some bass up here. There's a lot of lay downs, some good looking banks and stuff. It's unbelievable how I'm not seeing the gills. And the other day I was in my bass boat just in you know the par parts of the main lake. Which is so sad. I was I had dreams of taking the crispy and getting in these creeks and they were gonna be loaded, but I think we're gonna have to just take our little boat and head back to the main waters. But I've got a cooler. I need filling, so let's get to work. Ladies and gentlemen, look how big this gar is right here. Just a gigunda. Swimming at the surface. Dude, I can reach out and touch this guy. Hey, buddy. Oh my gosh, he's gonna freak out when he hits the boat. No, he's not. Look at him. Oh my God, I touched him. I touched him. He's huge. What in the world? Oh man, that would be so cool to catch that dude. I think he's trying to eat something. What are you trying to eat, man? Gosh. Oh my gosh, he's like hanging with me. He's hanging with me. I'm I'm one. I'm one with the fish. I'm ta what in the I've never seen anything like this. What is going on, buddy? He's hanging out with the motor. He's just, it's like he, he likes the, is he trying to get oxygen? I don't even know. This is the strangest thing, y'all. He's literally just hanging with the boat. I've seen so many gar rolling. I'm wondering if he's like just low on oxygen, but why would he hang close to the boat? Like he's, he's just hanging near the boat, like it's, a big gar friend of his or something. Wow. I'm so confused. Dude. What in the world? Look at him. Look. I'm touch I'm holding the gar. I'm hold I got him. I got him. I'm I'm petting him. I'm petting the daggum gar, y'all. It's like he likes it. What on earth? Like, I've got him. I'm, I'm just holding him still. Hey, buddy. He's like a dinosaur, man. This is crazy. 
Like he looks healthy. There you go, buddy. Just kick it. He just went under. He just went under and swam off like a normal gar would. That is one of the strangest things I've ever seen in freshwater fishing. Like just coming up to a gar that size. Nothing's wrong with it. Like it's not sick or anything. Maybe it ate something really big and it was trying to digest it. I, I don't know. But I've just seen tons of these gar today surfacing. And man, wouldn't that be cool to catch one? Like a spotted gar that size on a rod and reel? Pretty awesome. Go ahead and smash the, the like button for, for taming a gar. I feel like that's what I just did. Turok, the dinosaur tamer. You know, remember that game? Okay, back to my gill strategy. That was pretty awful. Coming up on another oddity. A freaking huge blue catfish. Oh my word in heaven. Look how big that thing is. Wow. We've traveled far. Now it is time for the nibbles. Let's see what this gets us. Oh, one's got it already. Why bam? Wasn't even looking. Oh, nibbing, nibbing. They might need a little something on there. But hey, guess what? This one's going in. You know, fish is small when you can just one hand the whole situation, but that's why they come in numbers. Get us like a, maybe a 12 pack McNugget or a, I don't know, maybe a 36 pack. This is insane how many more fish are sitting up here than there were where I was up in the creek where they should be. Oh, okay, now that one comes up and gets it. Wah-bam. Got him. Wah-bam. A little bigger. Y'all, these are so tasty. They're, they're almost like eating, well, they're way better than eating crawfish in terms of like you know, getting meat out of them and cleaning them, but I want to try a new new way of doing this here today. Oh my, I mean, the nibble is domination. So for those that are curious, these are crappie nibbles. You can get them just about everywhere you get your tackle. I honestly never really use them for crappie. I always use them for uh, for gills instead. I mainly fish for crappie with jigs and they usually eat the plastic just fine. Gotta be one right here on this little corner. Stuck him, ooh, that one's got some fight. That's a big one. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That is a respectable size gill. It's gonna be a tasty one. Got him. Good. There we go. Good one, good one off that piece of brush. It's a tasty eater. Thank you. This, this should be money. Oh yeah, watch to meet it. Wabam! Good. Y'all, it is just a nitro scorcher out here. So I'm gonna head in and start to clean these gills. I've got enough. I'm no longer mad at them, that's for sure. We got plenty. Fast forward a little bit and we have got our cooler full of gills y'all so I ended up catching uh, three decent size ones and then I've got just a bunch of little ones so so what I'm gonna do on a couple of these I'm just gonna fillet them normally like I normally would and it's tedious it's process to get a really sharp knife fillet these off the bone off the rib cage uh, but I've never tried like a trout method where you basically just take the head and the guts and take that off and then you cook the whole thing, but I'm gonna descale it. So I'll descale it 
and then take the guts out and then just cook it. And we're gonna pan fry those in an iron skillet, like shoreline style. And I think they're gonna be delicious, but I've never tried them with, uh, with the crispy skin and, and tail and everything like that. So if you were in like a camping scenario um, or just any kind of like woods, hiking, whatever, if you wanted to carry a little cane pole and, and little jigs and stuff like that, this would be an excellent way uh, to just get yourself some, some good protein out there in the woods, cook it up easily, fast, and get the most out of it instead of having a filet. But let's go through both, and then let's throw them in the skillet and compare. This tailgate right here, y'all, on the new truck, has no scales on it. So this is going to be the first time I'm cleaning fish. Uh, I honestly really like using the tailgate. I kind of wish I had like a cleaning station, a table, but this, this works just fine. It's at the perfect height, too. Also, I'm going to be using... Uh, my really nice fillet knife that I got uh, up on our, our youper tin. When me and Matt filmed Unthaw of the Great Northern Dangle, uh, I got him a knife and I also got myself a knife and uh, I just really thought these these would be really cool knives. They have a back a back blade on them, a back edge, uh, which is it feels like it's about a, a 40 degree. Like it's got a much stronger, um, less sharp, you could say, like more for doing heavy work. So I'm going to use that for descaling. The front end, which is probably a 20 degree, um, is really, really sharp. And that's what you do your filleting with. Anyways, y'all, I love and appreciate good knives. I like using them. And this is going to be a perfect job for it. So let's get to cracking on them. Start off with one of these good sized ones here. This is gonna be just a normal filet. I'm gonna do this normally. It takes a little bit longer. This is what you strive for right here. So you're trying to get them, them big ones right there. You can get some actual meat off of them and then you can filet them off the side. Little fish head in there, a little clamp. I really like using this board too. It just makes it easier when you're cleaning all sorts of fish. I usually keep it in my, in my truck. I'm just gonna go behind that little dorsal right there. And be careful not to cut all the way through and we're just going to go to the side I actually like to pivot these so I tend to do a little bit better going this way we're just going to cut down that this little spine right there just the same way you would any other fish the gill you really want to try to make sure you're you're getting as close as you can you're not wasting any meat there's not much to begin with. It's pretty close right there. And then once you get past that rib cage, you can go all the way through. And then you can just work it like that. Get through that skin. And then just flip that over. When you're cutting through that rib cage right there, once you get to the end of it, that's when you really want to turn your knife. A lot of times you can miss that little piece of meat. When I'm using a, uh, a regular fillet knife like this, instead of electric, I can feel a little bit better and it's just easier to get more meat. So, you know, I like, I like using these regular knives for stuff like this. If you're not, if you don't have to clean a ton, especially little stuff, just do a really clean job. So that is a beautiful piece of meat right there. That's going to be delicious nice little filet throw that in the fryer for like a minute and that's good to go so I've done two gills two of the biggest gills filet style and I want to do this one a different way so I'm actually gonna do this like a trout Let's see if I can just cut through here with this 40 degree end so right here is where I'm getting stuck I'm getting stuck on that that middle spine it makes me a little bit nervous taking this edge and running it through here I don't want to cut my fingers or anything I'm gonna actually grab a little bit bigger blade. Okay, this ought to do it. This is a knife I typically use around camp. That's a six inch with a 1095 steel. This one right here is really made, like <laughs> literally made for chopping through wood. You can use it as kind of almost like an ax. So, and it's very sharp. So that just goes right through there. And this whole thing is 40 degrees, so it's really meant for that type of rough cutting. You don't want to really dull your fillet knife. It's for really precise cuts. So now we have our headless, gutless gill. And I'm actually going to scale it, so I'm just going to put the tail end right in here. And we'll take our back edge. We're 
just going to scrape. And scales are going to go everywhere. So here is alternative two. This is what I really wanted to try. The guts are out of there. Heads off. And that is ready to be breaded and throw in a, a hot pan of grease. So scales are gone as well. Scraped all those off. Now I wanted to do it on a big one as like a large example, but where this is really useful is on those small ones because this is going to be more of a pain to eat, obviously. You've got the rib bones in there and everything. You're going to have to pick around that, but you're just getting a lot more meat off the fish. So we've only got a few more left, we're pretty close to being done. And one of the things that I'm doing with uh, the females that I'm getting, I take, I'm taking their rows, their little bluegill row, they're small, but the chickens absolutely love these. And then the other thing that I'm doing is I'm gonna take the heads and the entrails, I'm gonna use the entrails just as uh, bait, like uh, attract it, and then I'm gonna use the heads as, as actual bait for some of my jug lines for catfishing, because catfish love bluegill. So, circle of life here. Which chicken is bold enough to step up to the plate? I mean, they just get to one of the layers. Oh, there you go, fight over it. We got our bluegill in the refrigerator. OSG is making up a batter right now. I just want to give you all a quick knife care tip. So I always hone my knives after I get done processing game or whatever, just using it. And if you guys don't know how to uh, hone your knives, there's a bunch of YouTube videos that will show you how to do it. Uh, I just take a simple ceramic rod and I'll just run the blade down there and I'll get the, get the edge back. You're really not sharpening your knife uh, unless you damage it. Like you go through a heavy bone on a fillet knife say and, and you've chipped a piece or you know there's a dent in it or something. Really the tip I want to give you is when you get done doing that, use olive oil on your steels. So a lot of steels, especially carbon steel, uh, you need to keep the steel lubricated in order to pre or prevent it from rusting. So the worst thing in the world is to break out your knife. Uh, it's dull and it's rusty. So what you want to do to prevent rust and keep all your knives in really good shape is use some olive oil. And there's other products out there you can use. And in fact, I use them on some of my like straight up camp knives or really nice knives that I'm not going to be using for processing game, but for the ones that I'm using that basically I'm going to cut the stuff up and put it in my mouth. <laughs> I don't want to use any chemicals, so I use olive oil and it's actually a really great lubricant. So I'll just take a little bit of olive oil, rub it on the blade with my finger. Obviously be careful not to cut yourself, but put it on the cutting edge, put it on the, uh, the spine, everywhere basically, and you can even put it on the wood. And it's even great for the sheath too. It hydrates the leather. There's you know, a lot of organic material in here, wood, leather, um, and the, even the steel has pores in it. And this helps fill those pores, keep them hydrated, and it prevents rust from occurring. And then, hey, if you wanna cut up a fish, fry it, put it in your mouth, you don't have any chemicals in there. You wanna break out your knife, cut up an apple, you know, you, you're using olive oil. So it's just a natural oil that's harm, harmless. So hone and drop your knives after you get done using them, slap some olive oil on there and they're going to be rust free and sharp for the rest of your life. Death has got the grease hot and we have fresh farm to market, farm to table, market to table, market to table, zucchini, which y'all, my favorite side of all time. Tedious process. It's not quite the easiest side. Your mom does a much better job than I do. My mom used to make fried squash all the time. Uh, we do fried chicken with fried squash. We do fried squash with uh, fish a lot of times. I love it. I can eat uh, like two whole squashes if they're fried. Just gold crispies. They're like little miniature gold crispies. Love them so much. We're gonna do the fish the same way as we're doing the squash, but. I've got a, some, somebody sent in something to enhance the Golden Crispy experience. So I'm gonna go grab it from downstairs. It looks like a pretty cool tool. So this is a collapsible batter bowl. This is made by uh, Game Maker, if y'all are interested. So to add a little spice, we're gonna put some Texas peat in here with, what is already in there, babe? Um, it is one cup of milk and two eggs.
You went hard. I like my gills a little spicy. Wow. Stir that in. Now I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to add our AP flour, all purpose flour, I believe that stands for. That's right. We'll go four scoops, I guess. Throw a little bit of cornmeal in there. Hey, Eddie, you want to try one of these? Now we add our fish. I'm just going to place these in the flour. Fish. Fish, Amy. Yeah. Mess. Mess. That's correct. Yeah. Put this on here. Put this on top. You gotta shake it before you bake it. Shake and bake. And I'm gonna flip it over. And those little holes in this is gonna allow the flour to go to the other side and then I can reuse it. And we are left with some floured gills. Lift that up and you got fresh flour at the bottom. Now for the moment. We've all been waiting for. We're gonna take our gills over to the grease. We just got our zucchini, a little pinch of salt, a little pinch of black pepper, finish it off. Whole gill, except the head. Wah bam. That's a smooth sizzle. Okay, let's keep adding them. That's just a special sound right there. This has been about two and a half, three minutes. I think they're done. They are looking golden. Oh yes, my little friends. <laughs> it's kind of sad little, looking. Little, little Nemo's. <laughs> I know. I almost showed Emmy. Oh yeah, a bucket well, of fish. And I was yeah, like, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, because they really look like fish. Yeah. This would actually be a really fun thing for Amy to do. Mm-hmm. Because. It is a very simple technique. It is easy. There wasn't any treble hooks involved. This is something we could do as a family. And rake them up. Rake them all in. First batch of golden mm. crispies. Okay, fish and freaks. Let's try some gills. I think they fried up really nice. OSG did a good job on the batter and the zucchini. My gosh. telling you I could just down three or four zucchinis if they're fried like this they're amazing cold adult beverage of your choice this whole situation mmm I'm curious though how this is gonna break down so we got skin on no scales we've got these um, spiny rays up here I want to see if I can pull these out maybe these will just pull out okay so I'm gonna break apart that top oh that looks cooked perfectly so I've got it cooked just right where it'll just fall apart. So we kept the spiny rays up there so you can just pull them out. And just eat them like that. Obviously don't eat the spines, but you can really pick this thing apart. I mean, if you're sitting, sitting at the camp, you got a ton of time, nothing to do but look at nature, pick it apart, you're definitely gonna get the most most meat off this, I can already tell. Let's get to the main chunk. Okay, so this is gonna be some rib cage in here. So I'm just gonna hold it like this, eat it. Yeah, I'm just gonna go for it. Oh man, that works out really nice, y'all. Wow, look at that. You just take a bite out of the back and it's left clean like that. Oh my goodness, you're getting so much more meat this way. All right, let me take a look at this little side side unit here. I'm just gonna take my teeth and kind of go across the rib cage. Yeah, no, that's not working out. On the rib cage, that's always the part that you're gonna have trouble with trying to get meat off of. You can actually, if you want to, sit here and take all these little rib bones out and you'll get little, little morsels of meat like that. I, I compared it to crawdads earlier, but it's way more than a crawfish. You can clean that ribcage. Sure did. Wow. That's just a fried piece right there. Okay, now I'm gonna go the back tail part of the fish here. Comes off nicely. There's the tail. If you really wanted to get some extra calcium, 
probably just go ahead and eat the fins too, but go ahead and peel this one last little section off. That is what we're left with, eating it this way. One little tiny piece of meat right there. Just pull that off. That is just awesome. Bluegill are so good. They're tedious, you know. I have some of the fillets. Let's grab one of those just for reference real quick. So here is our regular fillet. This is off one of the bigger ones. Cook to perfection. Now you just throw it in your mouth. And it's amazing. Super white. Just fantastic meat, y'all. Fantastic meat on these gills. Ooh! Got a little bite on that Texas Pete. Mmm. Mmm-hmm. Mm I know, Amy. It is so good. Good. It's so good. You better not look over here because Nemo basically was uh, disemboweled pretty hard. I have a new perspective on bluegill now as a food source. Um, pretty amazing. They are widespread across the U.S. They're, they're probably the the easiest to catch and in terms of like just easy to catch and great taste. Uh, one of the best fish that you can get and they're accessible throughout the United States. And one of the really cool things about them is they are aggressive in the summer. There's a reason they call them sunfish. So if you want to go out and have some fun, catch some gills, don't forget to clean them up. Try this way. And I think you're going to find that they're, it's almost like eating fried chicken. There's a little bit more work, but there's a lot that comes on them. Until the next fishing adventure, y'all, I'm wishing you the best in all of your dangles. Bon appetit. And I'll see you on the next one.